Hello brothers and sisters, this is about the, the first temple. I will get on to the third temple because that's a major sign. But the background of the, of the first temple, the first temple was constructed by King Solomon. Though God gave the plans to King David, he didn't allow him to do it. In 833 BCE, King Solomon was, was at peace with the neighbours and so began the building of the temple on Mount Moriah, exactly the same place where Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac. So it's a holy place, mountain. It took seven years to complete. In 827 BCE, Solomon dedicated the temple and all its contents, including the Ark of the Covenant, which was brought in the temple after inauguration that lasted, celebration that lasted seven days. You can see the importance of number, number seven. So it took seven years to build and seven day inauguration. For the next 410 years, the Jews brought daily sac offerings to the temple three times a year to, to see God and be seen by God. It said there was 10 daily miracles that showed the divine presence of God. One of them I thought was quite interesting to mention, such that the wind never extinguished the fire from the altar. Can you imagine that? If there was a strong wind, it would never extinguish it. It was to show that God was present with them and God was happy with the, the Jewish nation. Solomon's reign was a golden era, but unfortunately, towards the end of, of his reign, and because he had so many wives, concubines, unfortunately they turned him to pagan idolatry. And so that was basically, that was near, you know, so God had told him what would happen, that he would be punished, and after he would die, his kingdom will be divided into two, and it's exactly what happened. After his death, the, Israel was torn in two. Ten northern tribes refused to accept Rehoboam, his son. So in 796 BC, the country divided in two, two kingdoms. Kingdom of Israel to the north and Judah, including Jerusalem to the south. Both king, kingdoms unfortunately turned to idolatry. So obviously, God was not happy. So he sent prophets to warn them to change their ways. One, you know, one such example was was uh, Zechariah. He they sent him there, but unfortunately they didn't they didn't take any notice. He, he warned them. They didn't change their ways. The temple and Jerusalem would would suffer the consequences, but in 661 BCE, unfortunately, the Jews the, the Jews themselves stoned him to death in a temple courtyard on Yom Kippur, calling him a false prophet or messenger. But rather than let Zechariah's blood seep into the earth. You know what he did? God caused the, the blood of Zechariah to bubble forth from the ground for 252 years until the destruction of the temple. They, whatever they did, they just couldn't cover it up. Can you imagine it? It was going to be a bad sign to them for 252 years for their error. Also, another prophet was sent to Jerusalem to warn them that Solomon's temple would be destroyed, or God's temple would be destroyed. In 463 BCE, he prophesied that the Babylonians were going to destroy them and, and the temple if they didn't, if they stopped you know, if they carried on mistreating each other and, and worship idols, God 
was going to punish them by destroying the temple and that. But instead they mocked him and persecuted him. And Jeremiah, and, and in chapter 36 of Jeremiah, God told him this, what to say. Take for yourself a roll of a book, and you must write in it all the words that I have spoken to you against Israel, against Judah, and against all the nations since the day that I spoke to you, since the days of Josiah clear down to this day. Perhaps those of the house of Judah will listen to all the calamity that I am thinking of doing to them to the end, that they may return each one from the bad way, and that I may actually forgive their error and their sin. God was saying, you know, and uh, you know, if you tell them all the bad things I'm going to do, maybe they might change from their their evil way, and away from idolatry and bad practices, and maybe I I can give them the forgiveness. He wrote a book of lamentation. This book, and then, but unfortunately, they didn't take any notice. Even though he said they told them all these things that was going to happen, and in 434 BC, Babylon, under King Nebuchadnezzar, pillaged Jerusalem, and thousands of Jews were deported to Babylon's capital. On the seventh day of Av, Nebuchadnezzar began destruction of the royal palace, set it ablaze. But, and you know, all the gold, silver, artwork, everything was stolen. And on the ninth day of Av, the holy temple, the first temple that Solomon built, was destroyed, set on fire. It said that there is a tradition that says the, the priests with the key of the sanctuary of the temple went to the roof declaring that he was not a trustworthy custodian because he failed and threw the keys into heaven and apparently a hand from heaven grabbed it. So what can, you know, what, it said that before the temple was destroyed and all the contents of the holy utensils from the first temple was hidden by Jeremiah and the Ark of the Covenant. But what can we learn from this? We must heed God's warning before a calamity will happen. What warnings? Well, it's all written down. Just like the Book of Lamentation which unfortunately is read on on ninth of Av every year because of the destruction of the temple. But we, our warning is in Revelation. God has warned us all the things, all you need to do is read Revelation that John wrote about the seven years of tribulation in detail. Seven trumpets and seven bowls of God's anger. Judgment will be sent upon the earth. So we need to, you know, take God's heed of God's warning. And let me read from John 14, 14 6. John, and it is 14 6 which says Jesus said I to him I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me see the, there is no other way to salvation God has given us warnings in Revelation so that the only thing we do is repent now because the end is very very near we can see all the signs in you know we can see all the signs in Matthew 24 
you know, when you see walls, rumors, you hear rumors of walls, earthquakes, famine, it's happening now. As Luke 21, 26 says, While men become faint out of fear and expectation of the things coming upon the inhabited earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaking, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Yes, while men become faint out of fear, these are, because these are the ones that didn't heed the message. But it says here, and then, it said, but as these things start to occur, you know, the signs in Matthew 24, as we discussed, raise yourself erect and lift your heads up because your deliverance is getting near. And that's what we should do, brothers and sisters. Heed God's warning. So, because Christ is coming soon, don't be on the wrong side and repent through Jesus' name. Bye. Take care.